Hello and welcome back to Reentry, an orbital simulator. So last episode we got into lunar orbit a little bit hectically, but we did in fact get there. And this mission, I believe we are coming back home. The crew is ready to go home, thrust of the engineers. Yep, simply it's time to go home. So I think we're going to be starting up in lunar orbit and we're going to be performing a trans-earth injection, re-entry, and splashdown, and let's hope the parachutes deploy, because that would be mm, kind of a very <laughs> terrible ending to such a very fun mission. Uh, so yeah, here's hoping. All right, here we are. Welcome back to the moon, guys. In the Aurora capsule, it is, of course, Apollo. In lunar orbit, uh, I'm not sure where the Earth is relative to us at the moment, uh, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back. We're about 30 minutes away from the scheduled trans-Earth injection burn. Let's set up the craft and prepare for the burn. Roger, we're going to open up the TEI planner. Press TEI. So our delta V in feet per second is being written here as a fraction of escape velocity. Now, of course, escape velocity is the speed you need to leave a celestial body's orbit. So any lower than that and you're stuck in orbit, anything above one, you're going to be leaving that celestial body. And of course, we want to leave orbit of the moon and return to the Earth. Now, we want a uh, peri uh, periapsis of a 3,464 nautical miles. And that should bring us into a trajectory with 6.5 degrees. So right here on the right, you see a periapsis of 119 nautical miles, 3,559 nautical miles. So that might seem like a bug at first, but what I believe this is, is 119 nautical miles from sea level. And this is the number that um, it would be like from the center of the earth. And I believe that's what we're targeting here. So 1.1 1 .1, uh, as a fraction of escape velocity is actually very, very, very close here. You can see 1.11. And well, that's a little bit, that's a little bit intense of a burn there. So. Uh, what we can do is change this by very, very small amounts. See, now we have 559, 536, 491. Okay, so 424, 446, 469, 3469. Okay, so 1.1004 from our current 30 kilometer orbit, I believe they mentioned, is uh, precisely what we want to do. And I unpause the game now, so the time to burn is going down 860 seconds. Uh, I'm going to request this. Request. All right. Time to ignition is 73 hours, 27 minutes, and 47 seconds. That, of course, is not from now. That is mission time. Mission time up on the middle. Uh, was it panel two, right? This would be panel two. Uh, is at 73 hours, 15 minutes, and 13 seconds. So uh, that 830 seconds, is, is, that, is, that, is that not accurate? Because that's actually only about 12 minutes. Well, 12 times 60. No, that's about that's about there. All right, math is difficult. I just got off work. My brain is kind of mush. <laughs> and I'm doing this. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. It should bring us onto a trajectory with an intrigue. Oh, yes, yes, we already used it. That burn requested. Next up is to run program 30. We'll do that now. Right. Verb... 37 noun 30. And this will, of course, set up the burn. We're going to keep the default values for this attitude and burn things. So we're going to hit proceed there. And this should be our attitude. And I don't know exactly what that is relative to. Uh, but we're going to keep default values because they were input from the burn planner. Now, if I go into the checklist here and find. Oh, where would it be? Program 30. Well, I don't see what I'm trying to look for. You know, it would be really useful to have like a small search bar up here where I could search for each one of these checklists. I don't know how hard that would be to code, but uh, Petrie, that would be a fantastic little thing when you get uh, into sort of complicated checklist lists like this. Lists of lists uh, require a search bar. That would be fantastic. But anyways, Oh, like I was saying, we're going to leave these at default values. We're just going to hit proceed. I'm not going to mess with anything manually. 642, uh, to my memory, should be telling us things about our burn. Specifically, register 3 is telling us the magnitude of our burn. Uh, and I think this might be orbital data, although I 
cannot remember what is what. We're going to hit proceed once again. And now we're on 1645, which shows a countdown. So we're seven and a half minutes away from our burn. So we're going to hit proceed. All right, time to run program 52 to tell the onboard computer where to point us. Four, six. So what we want to do is change register 22 to option one preferred. I do believe. Oh, I accidentally set that wrong. Verb 22, one. There we go. I believe that's what we want to do. Go for option one and feel free to follow the checklist. Press ready when you have aligned the IMU. Copy that. All right, so we're going to hit proceed there. Or sorry, proceed now. Enter proceed. When we hit proceed, there we go, 622. I'm not sure why it wasn't working there. But okay, so this is our basically using... Roll pitch and yaw showing the attitude of our burn or the vector. Nah, well, attitude, I know for sure. Uh, so, yeah, we'll accept that. That looks good. That was imported from the uh, imported from from the maneuver planner. And I believe that program 52 is just aligning our FDAI. I believe we have this set up on our ordeal correctly. Looks like we're on inertial power off. Yeah, that should be good. This should be showing basically all zeros where we need to point i think that's the idea and program 40 will perform the burn but i believe it also oops i didn't actually hit uh the correct buttons here verb 37 enter or zero enter i believe program 40 is going to perform the burn but it will also this one right here request uh moving automatic attitude to the correct location and you can see here our rates have changed let's set the rate to high uh, it looks more dramatic when it's on low. We'll leave it at low. And you can see our indicators are showing that it wants us to point somewhere else. And the onboard guidance is doing that automatically. So awesome. Yep, P40. Roger, proceed towards countdown and make sure the craft is aligning with the burn direction. It, I believe, is. We're going to go ahead and arm the engine for when it is needed. Oh, it looks like it is already armed. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, when our attitude is aligned, we will uh, go ahead and hit proceed on there. Feel free to use time scale to about T minus five minutes. Is it? Is it? Are, are we already? Okay, we need to speed up this process. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to rate high. Uh, and we want to have some manual control here. It looks like we do have it. Yeah, all right, rate high, and we're going to push ourselves over to where we need to be, because I think our burn is coming up here very, very soon, and I would like to be in the correct attitude. So we're wasting fuel. We're we're really, 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 really huffing it over there, I guess is the word I was looking for. I'm a bit worried that we have already gone past the burn. I don't remember. I thought it was set to 73 hours, 25 minutes, something. In which case, uh, we're going to have to replan this. That's not a terribly bad thing. I'm right, counting for the roll here. I believe it is aiming us towards the zero, zero, zero mark. It sure is. Uh, overshot a little bit there. Okay. All right. We go back to right low. Give the autopilot uh, some room here. And hit proceed and proceed. 204. Yep. Uh, we're good to go. T minus 60 seconds. Verify attitude. You can help it using direct if needed. Uh, looks like our attitude is all right. I will be adjusting it slightly. But it seems like we're holding good. And we're burning slightly, slightly down. That is actually what we want to do for this burn. So at the beginning of the burn, we should be facing slightly down to the horizon, 30 seconds. 
And towards the end of the burn, we should be facing slightly above the horizon. So that right in the center of the burn, we are facing directly on the horizon. Uh, not needed to be said, but that's the idea at least. I, I wonder, did we actually get through the attitude change at exactly 60 seconds to the burn? Let's hope it ignites. Yeah, hope. Yeah, let's let's hope for sure. Ready to hit proceed at T minus five. There we go. User confirm. And monitor ignition. All right, we've ignited. Uh, I mean, I should have set this to Delta VLX like seeing that number move, but that's all right. Very good. It will be a shorter burn uh, then for lunar orbit insertion as the service module is lighter. Yeah, it should be about four to five minutes long. And hopefully, hopefully nothing goes wrong, but our engine is lit. We are on our way to the moon above us here. Very nice. Well, it's going to be a little bit until we see you again, moon, but hopefully, hopefully next time we see you, we get to be much, much closer akin to landing on your surface. That's right, because there's four campaigns in this game. The first one was, of course, Mercury. The second one, Gemini. The third one we are currently in right now is, I believe, simply this mission, learning Apollo and all that. And the fourth one, it's got to be landing on the moon. It's got to be. And we're getting closer to that. I'm very, very excited to do that. Okay. The onboard computer should shut off the engine when the burn is complete. So we pretty much just get to sit back, relax, and let this beautiful piece of hardware do its thing. Hold on a second, what are these seats doing here? Get these seats out of there. Yeah, all right, now we got a little bit more room. I know what I am just remembering one of the comments on uh, my YouTube videos of this series. Uh, someone requesting that it be a little bit brighter in here. And that is something I've neglected to do last episode. However, we could totally turn some lights on. There we go, it's a little bit brighter in here. You can see a little bit easier. Just in case you're in a darker area and are unable to see as much. Now monitoring our attitude here, it looks like that is holding. Uh, it looks like we're slightly above though, so I'm gonna manually pulse this down. Okay, we're good. We want this to be very accurate, at least fairly accurate, because I imagine that we want to come home safely. And uh, I am, I'm honestly interested to see if there's any sort of mid-course corrections on our way back home. Uh, because as you know from, well, movies or playing Kerbal Space Program itself, Oh, burn complete. That this entry into Earth's atmosphere is very, very specific. If you, you know, don't dip down into the atmosphere enough, then you'll fly off into space and be gone forever, basically. If you go too deep in the atmosphere, you could burn up and die. And we don't want to do either of those. All right, we should be on an escape trajectory from the moon. So when we look out this window at the lunar surface, although we are going around the dark side of the moon, uh, it's going to be slowly getting smaller and smaller. Roger. Feels strange, doesn't it? Sure does. It sure has been a strange day orbiting the moon. Yeah, especially with my method of getting here into orbit of the moon last episode. <laughs> and as we acquire signal with Earth again, we should have a nice last view of that Earth rise in the lunar surface from this altitude. Not sure about your intentions, but I sure plan on returning and landing that LEM in the Lunar Service. Yep. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Maneuver and maintain a good attitude for Earthrise. Copy that. Yeah, we can do that. Let's get let's get the uh No translation control should still be powered. Let's set this to hold. I'm um, not exactly sure where we're going to be able to see uh, the Earth here. However, I believe the darkness here is where the moon is. It, is, it does happen to be very, very dark. 
you know, at night. So I'm going to time scale ahead here. I think the moon is slowly going above us. I'm going to time scale ahead here until we find the Earth rise, because that I do want to see that. We saw the Earth set last episode. Let's see it rise. There it is. Now, I happened to miss the actual Earth rise moment, but it was pretty much imagine this just appearing from a, a black line that you could not see, basically. Just kind of peeking up from the moon because we're on the dark side of the moon entirely and we, we have no light here. But there's Earth. We are a long way away from everything we know and love. And then we got to get back there safely. That's our, that's our next objective. Uh, set this back to hold. And we have acquisition of signal again. So, Aurora, do you read loud and clear? Trans-Earth injection burn complete. Great job. We are on the final leg of the journey before service module separation and atmospheric entry. Enjoy the view. This completes the mission. Oh, wow. Okay. That was actually a rather short mission. So... Uh, next episode, we are going to be returning into the atmosphere. I kind of figured that it would be all-inclusive with this episode, but it doesn't appear to be. So, we were able to perform a trans-Earth injection. Theoretically, everything has went well. We don't really know. We, we haven't heard from uh, ground control if things have gone all right or not. However, however, let's just say that everything went perfectly and now we're leaving the moon it's much less shenanigans than actually getting into orbit so next episode will be coming back home and the episode after that i believe should be starting up the lunar landing campaign which oh man i am very excited for that i wonder what that's going to be like i wonder if it'll start from launch or if it will start us in the um lunar lander the lem in orbit of the moon I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out in the coming episodes. All right, so thank you all so much for watching, and peace out.